Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter States of Matter. In this video, I'm going to solve three numericals based on Boyle's law from your NCRT textbook exercise. And in the next video, I'm going to solve three problems from the New York Prentice Hall chemistry textbook. So let us not waste any time and start with this. As you know, in the previous video, I told you about the Boyle's law that when the number of moles of a gas is kept constant or for a fixed number of moles of a gas, when the temperature is constant, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Therefore, the relationship that we aim for, that we use in this law is P1V1 is equal to P2V2. Using that relation, we are going to solve a few numericals. The first question here is, this is the first question of your textbook exercise, chapter 5, question 1 of the NCRT exercise. What will be the minimum pressure required to compress 500 decimeter cube of air at 1 bar to 200 decimeter cube at 30 degrees Celsius? Whenever you're solving problems that are based on Boyle's law, first of all, you should know uh, why is this question related to Boyle's law? What is given to you? If pressure and volume are given to you at a constant temperature, assuming that or rather when you can derive that it's for a fixed number of moles and that amount of substance is uh, at the same temperature is undergoing a change in pressure or volume, then you can use the relation P1V1 is equal to P2E2 according to Boyle's law. So what is the question here? What will be the minimum pressure required to compress? So we are compressing a gas from 500 decimeter cube to 200 decimeter cube. The pressure is one bar and the temperature is fixed that is 30 degrees Celsius. So the requirements for our equation are P1V1 is equal to P2V2. So what we are looking for is P1V1, P2 and V2. So let's first write what is P1 here? What is V1 here? What is P2 and what is V2? Now, we say the pressure required to compress 500 decimeter cube. 500 decimeter cube is volume 1. 500 decimeter cube is volume 1. And volume uh, of air at 1 bar. So pressure P1 is 1 bar. What will be the minimum pressure required? So you are required to find out P2. And V2 is the volume is changing from 500 decimeter cube to 200 decimeter cube. When you solve these numericals, always remember the units of volume should be the same. The units of pressure should be the same. It's You can only mathematically solve a question where the units for one particular quantity are the same. So now we use the relation P1V1 is equal to P2V2. So P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. But what are we looking for? We are looking for P2. So rearrange the equation. P2 therefore should be equal to, if we are looking for P2, then P1, V1 remains as such on the other side of the equation. I flipped the equation. P1, V1 and we are looking for P2. So where would the V2 go? It will come down here. So P1, V1 upon V2 is what we have to calculate. Now from these given amounts, what do we have P1? P1 is 1 bar into V1 is 500 decimeter cube. Do you see this? And V2 would be is 200 decimeter cube. Now the units decimeter cube, decimeter cube are cancelled. The two zeros here, two zeros here. So you have 5 divided by 2 would be 2.5 and what would the unit the unit that you're left with is 2.5 bar and isn't it right p2 the pressure should be in bars so the answer that you get is 2.5 bar always cancelling out units and putting them the units also in the equation helps you to make sure that you plugged in the right quantities at the right place if you're getting the right unit it means you plug things right here so let's now move to the next question this is question 2 of your NCRT exercise, question 5.2. The question reads, a vessel of 120 milliliter capacity, a vessel of 120 milliliter capacity undergoes, or sorry, contains a certain amount of gas at 35 degrees Celsius and 1.2 bar pressure. So what do we know? We know the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. 
the pressure is 1.2 bar and the volume is 120 ml. Now the gas is transferred to another vessel of volume 180 milliliters at 35 degrees Celsius. So what do we notice? Temperature is constant. We notice for this change the temperature is constant and what are the other quantities that we have pressure and volume so what is the law that would be applicable the pressure volume law would be Boyle's law so now what would be its pressure so let's look for again p1 what's p1 what's v1 what's p2 and what's v2 the first step is to identify these values okay so p1 uh, a vessel of 120 ml v1 is 120 ml okay and it contains a certain amount of gas at 35 degrees Celsius at 1 bar, 1.2 bar pressure. So we know P1 is 1.2 bar. The gas is transferred to another vessel of 180 ml is the volume, the final volume. And the pressure again is required. So what would, according to P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2 and rearranging. P2 would be equal to P1 V1 upon V2, right? So this would be 1.2 bar into what is V1? 120 ml and V2 is 180 ml, right? When you solve this, the ml, ml go off, the zero, zero go off. This is 6 twos are, 6 threes are. So 1.2 into 2 would be 2.4, right? Divided by 3. So what would this be? Point, 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8 and what would the unit be? Bar. The pressure would be 0 0.8 bar. So this was question 2. Now this is question 5.8 or the eighth question of the fifth chapter of the NCRT textbook exercise. Let me read the question. It is, what will be the pressure of the gaseous mixture when 0.5 liters of dihydrogen at 0.8 bar and 2 liters of dioxygen at 0.7 bars are introduced in a 1 liter vessel at 27 degree Celsius? What do we see? 27 degrees Celsius is the temperature which is constant. But now we find that instead of one gas, we have two gases. Which are those? We have hydrogen and oxygen. There are two gases. And we have been given the, uh, the pressure of hydrogen and the volume of hydrogen. Sorry, the volume and pressure of hydrogen and the volume and pressure of oxygen. And the final volume is given. That is the final pressure of both the gases is not known to us. You know when you have two gases and you put both the gases in a vessel. For Like here we put both the gases in a vessel which has a capacity of 1 litre. Both the gases, they contribute their own pressure. Because what is pressure? Pressure is the number of times the molecules hit the walls of a container. So if you have one gas, those number of molecules will hit the walls of the container and produce their own pressure. But if you have another gas in between, those molecules would also hit the walls of the container and exert pressure of their own. So what would the total pressure now? It says what will be the pressure of the gaseous mixture. It means we now want to know the total pressure of the vessel which is of one liter in which now two gases have been put. So the total pressure would be the sum of the pressures of both the gases. Because when you put one gas into it, it's doing, the molecules are doing their own thing. You put the other gas into it, those molecules are doing their own thing. Because molecules of a gas, they do not, uh, they are not attracted to each other as such. Or the forces of attraction aren't so strong that they would stay together. They just are free to move about randomly. I would like you to imagine a situation where uh, you have your school, a regular school day going on and the one of the classes goes into the playground, okay? One of the classes goes into the playground and when children are there in the playground from one class, there's another class which also comes in and joins or rather goes into the playground. Now what do you have? You have children in the playground just chasing the ball or doing whatever they, whatever they do. This children of the second 
class when they come in what are they going to do they are just going to add to the chaos they are also going to run about in the same playground the size of the playground is the same but let us say the chaos or uh, the noise produced by one class uh, let us call that the pressure okay the noise that was being produced by one they're creating their own noise but this other class that came in and they were doing their own thing and making their own noise chasing balls and doing whatever they added to the noise so what is the total pressure that is the what is the total noise in the playground the total noise would be the sum of the noise or the pressure by both the classes it doesn't matter that you had students of one class and the students of the other class were different because they belong to two different classes whether they are molecules of hydrogen or they are molecules of oxygen it doesn't matter they are doing their own thing and oxygen they are doing their own thing so they the total ultimate pressure is the sum of the pressures of both of these so how would we solve this there would be two parts first we have to find out the final pressure of both the gases separately and then because they are doing their own thing we have to calculate their noise we have to calculate their noise and then find the sum of the noise of both the classes so we have to find out the pressure of hydrogen pressure of oxygen and the total pressure should be the sum of the two so let's solve this for hydrogen what would p1 we are using boyle's law here p1 v1 we are looking for p1 v1 we are looking for p2 and v2 right for hydrogen what will be the pressure of the gaseous mixture when 0.5 liters of hydrogen so we have 0.5 liters of hydrogen at 0.8 bar the pressure is 0.8 bars and uh, 2 liters of oxygen so we are not concerned with oxygen what is the final volume final volume is 1 liter right and for the second part we have oxygen we'll solve that later let us first find out p2 what is p2 p2 is the is to be found out and it is the pressure of hydrogen that we are trying to find out so let me substitute this p2 in the equation p2 p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 let me write p2 as ph2 right so p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 or p2 i'm writing as ph2 right pH2 so what would pH2 be equal to pH2 would be equal to P1 V1 upon V2 right do you see this the pressure of hydrogen pH2 would be P1 V1 upon V2 so let's substitute the values P1 is 0 0.8 0 0.8 bar I did not write the unit here so it should be 0 0.8 bar into the volume is 0 0.5 liters and the final volume is 1 liter right so when you solve this 8 pipes are 40 so this becomes equal to 0 0.4 bar why because the liter and the liter are gone right yeah so we have 0.4 bar which is the pressure of hydrogen so let us now calculate the pressure of oxygen in order to calculate the pressure of oxygen we are again following Boyle's law we are looking for p1 v1 p2 and v2 this time we are again looking for pressure of oxygen so p2 we would substitute it as po2 right so now what is p1 the pressure of 2 liters of oxygen it means v1 is 2.0 liters and the pressure is 0 0.7 bar the volume is one liter the final volume is one liter so we are looking for p2 now so po2 would be equal to p1 v1 upon v2 therefore it would be equal to substituting the values 0 0.7 bar into v1 is 2.0 liters upon one liter the liter and liter are cancelled due to multiply 0 0.7 by 2 it would come to be 1.4 so it is 1.4 bar now the sum of the two pressures when you have two gases exerting pressure inside a vessel each one the contribution of each we say one the total pressure is actually a sum of the partial pressures of the two gases 
So the partial pressure, we would now call this pH2 and PO2 are the partial pressures of the two gases. So the total pressure, pressure would be equal to pH2 plus PO2, the sum of the partial pressures. So this would be what is pH2 that we calculated? It was 0 0.4 bar and P oxygen was 1.4 bar. Therefore, the total pressure of the mixture of the two gases in a one liter vessel at 27 degrees Celsius would be 1.8 bar, right? So this was uh, question 5.8 from the NCRT textbook exercise. Now these are all the questions that you have on Boyle's law in the NCRT textbook. In the next video, I'll be doing uh, the problems in the Prentice Hall, New York Prentice Hall chemistry textbook. I'll solve three more problems on the Boyle's law. You know, on solving this problem, I am uh, reminded of uh, the time when I used to teach uh, at Delhi and uh, Virat Kohli was my uh, student. And um, well, if you're in a rush, Please move on to my next video but I'd like to share this memory with you if you have time well <laughs> listen to it this example of you know the chaos in the playground and students when they, to me sports has or the playground has always been a jar with <laughs> molecules with, who, that don't know what they have to do and they're just chasing a ball and running around like gaseous molecules really not knowing what they're doing so when Virat would be, there would be cricket matches in the school and uh, whichever house Virat was in, would it was known to all students. There would be so much of excitement in the classrooms because all the kids, they felt that whichever house Virat is in, is that house is definitely going to win. And uh, so there was a lot of cheering and they would all really plead to go to the ground so that they could see the matches and uh, cricket was always has always been a craze in India and uh, Virat later on became the captain of the Indian cricket team and uh, <laughs> but I still remember children being so excited and I I can never forget that chaos in the playground, you know, be all kids running behind one ball and <laughs> trying to score whatever they're trying to, and the kids in the playground. It really reminds me of uh, that time when uh, these kids were, they played and how crazy they were. And uh, I'm still the same, you know, to me, they're still a jar full of gaseous molecules, really not knowing what they're doing, but they do make their noise and uh, create pleasure in the lives of so many people. So in the next video, please move on to uh, three more problems. I'll solve three more problems on Boyle's Law. And um, if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. I'm going to come back right now for three more problems on Boyle's Law. Thank you. Bye-bye, for now.